This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Hey everybody, how are you? David Franco here from davidfranco.com. I just finished watching the live stream of this year's WWDC, also known as the Worldwide Developers Conference 2014 in good old California. Now I gotta say going right off the bat, you know, before I get into all the details regarding OS 10 and iOS 8 in my other video, Apple freaking killed it today. I was not expecting this many announcements and this much of a radical change with OS 10 and iOS 8 and Swift, a brand new programming language created by Apple themselves. Just incredible. Apple has been busy and now this explains why they've been so freaking quiet for this first half of 2014. So now with that said, let's get on to my thoughts regarding OS 10 Yosemite. I said it right. Now the rumors were correct, OS X Yosemite is the official name of the next version of OS X. And you know what? I'm fine with it. I mean, I've had to practice a few times of how to actually pronounce Yosemite the correct way, because at first I was saying Yosetimi, like Yosetimi. But then I was thinking, wait a minute, and before the T, Yosemite. 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 Yo, Semite. Okay, joking aside though, this is easily the biggest change to OS X ever. Seriously, this is easily the most radical difference that we've ever seen. And of course, this starts with a brand new user interface. OS X has pretty much been painted over with what seems to be like versions of iOS 7 mixed in with some things from Mavericks and maybe a hint of OS X Tiger hence the flat dock. And you know what guys? That's a good thing. I am definitely a huge fan of everything I've seen in the keynote. Okay, so I obviously haven't used OS X Yosemite myself, but I will this fall when it releases for completely free. But in the meantime, let's just go through everything that was announced during today's keynote. Now shown off briefly during this keynote is something called the dark mode, because let's face it, not everybody likes the bright colors and whatever. So I think through the simple click of a button or a switch or something like that, you can change from, well, light mode into dark mode. Think like Tweetbot, my fellow Tweetbot users out there, there is a dark mode or night mode, they call it, feature, and it works quite well. Me, personally, I prefer the regular light mode, and I'm perfectly fine with that. So let's talk about Notification Center, and now closely resembles what you see on iOS 7, which I think is a good thing, because if you look on Mavericks and you click that little gear icon or whatever in the top right, it's not a gear, but you know what I mean, it's kind of like three little lines, but you click that and it shows a pretty decent view, but it doesn't exactly match what you're already used to seeing on your iPhone, iPad, or iPod Touch. But thankfully now it does, and I'm definitely a visually driven kind of user. I like things matching across my iPad, iPhone, and now my Mac, so bravo Apple. All right, speeding up a bit, Spotlight is more information driven. Think kind of like a Google Now type interface, but on your Mac. And it's actually kind of like Siri now. So for example, if you search something on your phone and it's not on your phone locally, Siri will give you the option to search the web or Wikipedia. And now it's the same exact thing on the Mac via Yosemite. Now this next one is very interesting. You may or may not know this, but I'm definitely a huge fan of Dashboard. Ever since Dashboard was introduced back in what? I think OS X Tiger? I could be wrong. I've just been obsessed with it. I love it. It's definitely a daily part of my life. And actually, I don't even think about it sometimes. I just hit my dashboard key on my keyboard and I check today's weather. Or I use the calculator. Or I track my shipments via Amazon and UPS, USPS, all those good brands and carriers and all that stuff. The point here is I love Dashboard and I'm really glad to see that Apple isn't exactly taking away the functionality of Dashboard. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, Dashboard is gone. I mean, it might still be there. We're not really sure until we can actually use Yosemite ourselves. But until then, we're just gonna have to kind of assume that these new widgets within Notification Center um, on Yosemite is kind of like a replacement for Dashboard. Which would actually make sense because now OS X will have this beautiful, flat, refined look but then you press a dashboard key and you see these like 3D type um, widgets and they wouldn't really match. And like I said, I'm a very visually driven person, so I like when things appear consistent. So with that said, I am very excited about these new widgets and I can't wait to see how they work. And then there's iCloud Drive, a brand new feature in OS X. Think Dropbox-like functionality, 
but Apple's take on it. And this is good. I'm definitely a big fan of iCloud. I love how everything syncs in the cloud across all my devices. It's a very nice and very convenient feature, especially when it comes to having my bookmarks synced automatically. Something like that goes a long way. But now that iCloud finally has file storage synchronization, that's just huge. And that's just one less reason for me to use Dropbox. And plus guys, let's face it, it all comes down to convenience. The fact that my files can appear the same on my Mac as well as my iPad, iPhone, iPod Touch. I don't have my iPod Touch anymore, but you get the point. Synchronization is always good. And then we have something called MailDrop. This basically lets you send files of up to five gigabytes in size, no matter what ISP you're using. Whether it's Gmail, Comcast, Hotmail, whatever. There has always been some sort of file attachment limitation where you can't send files over the size of 20 megabytes or something pathetic like that, even though it's 2014, I'm not sure why. But Apple has thankfully found a solution to this problem. So say I'm sending a message to you from Gmail to Hotmail, and I'm sending a video that's 1.2 gigabytes large. Obviously Gmail and Hotmail are not going to like that large file size. So my email will technically still go from Gmail to Hotmail, but that middleman will take that large 1.2 gigabyte video file size send it up to iCloud Drive and give that other person a link to download that file where they're technically downloading it from iCloud and not Gmail or Hotmail. That's the best way I can explain it, but hopefully you get what I'm trying to, well, explain. Guys, I gotta say right now, this is a godsend. For someone like myself who sends files on a regular basis, this is a huge, Huge deal, and I'm really glad to see that Apple is tackling it head on. Head on, applied directly to the forehead. So next up, we have a completely new Safari from what I've seen during the keynote. Again, I haven't used it myself. It looks like a much simpler Safari, at least on the eyes, but the functionality is still there. And now there's AirDrop. Finally, AirDrop works between iOS and OS X. This is a huge feature, again, for someone like myself who handles files on a regular basis. Even if it's just me and I do a large video on my iPhone or whatever, I don't feel like emailing it to myself or plugging in my lighting adapter to my Mac just to sync over one video. So now with Yosemite, I can easily send a large video file or anything I want as long as I'm on the same network from my iPhone to my Mac, from my Mac to my iPhone, Mac to iPad, iPad to Mac, and you get the point. And then there's handoff. This is actually a really cool feature that I think I may have wanted in the past without even realizing it, if that even makes sense. Seriously though, there's sometimes there's moments where I'm writing a long email on my iPad, which I try not to do because I prefer a physical keyboard. And yeah, I realize you can do Bluetooth keyboards, but I'm not usually around a Bluetooth keyboard at least with my iPad, if I'm out and about like vacation or something. Okay, but anyway, getting back on track. Say I'm writing a long email and I suddenly wanna send that email from my iPad to my Mac. Well now with handoff, I can. In theory, I kinda just slide the app up, not exactly sure how it works in terms of gestures, but I slide the app out of my iPad or my iPhone and it magically appears on my Mac Pro. How cool is that it's features like this that in my opinion go a long, long way. Now this next feature I didn't expect Apple to announce but it could actually be quite useful. I mean, especially if your phone's across the house or wherever. And that is answering and making iPhone phone calls on your Mac. So say for example, I get a phone call from a friend and for some reason my iPhone is in my bedroom charging, but I'm here getting work done and I'm really concentrated on a project, and I'm really focused on getting it done, and I don't feel like getting up. Well now, just like how Messages works, your phone calls will now come to your Mac, and you can answer the phone calls right there at your Mac. And I gotta say, the user interface looks just elegant. So this could be a really handy feature, and I cannot wait to put it to use. And finally, in terms of features, we have a new Photos app coming to OS X Yosemite. Now I saw, I think it was Detroit Borg on Twitter say, could this new Photos app on the Mac 
be the end of line for iPhoto? No, I don't think so. Think of photos on your iPhone and iPad, but now we have a basic photos app on your Mac without having to even be a part of iLife. And that's exactly what it is. It's a basic photo manager and a very basic photo editor. I mean, it's really no different than your music app on your iPhone. Going from that to the iTunes app on your Mac, while it's not called music on your Mac, it's still the same idea. You're going from app to app, and Apple likes that continuity and not breaking up the user experience. So I think it's a smart move. I don't see myself using the Photos app that often because I'm primarily an Aperture user and soon to be a Lightroom user. I mean, yes, I did finally purchase Lightroom like months ago, but I haven't really been taking any pictures lately, but I will be using Lightroom soon. And now finally, OS 10 Yosemite, like I said in the earlier part of this video, is available for free as of this fall, and it's available this summer as a beta. And as you may or may not know, Apple now has a public beta program where you don't even have to be an app developer to get access to early builds of software, which in this case is OS 10 Yosemite. So you can bet your eye butts, eye butts, that I will be downloading the beta of Yosemite this summer. So guys, that's it. Those are my thoughts on today's OS 10 announcements. Let me know what you think. Are you overall happy with it? Oh, and by the way, I just got to say this very quickly because I didn't say this earlier. I don't believe I did anyway. OS 10 Yosemite's icons actually look pretty damn good. I mean, they look so much better than some of the icons do on iOS 7. I'm talking to you, Safari. So thank you, Apple, for having a bit of more sense when designing those icons. I'm not saying I hate iOS 7 overall because I actually love it. It's the best version of iOS ever, in my opinion. But it's icons like Safari that just make me sick to my stomach. Not literally, but you know what I mean? I just don't like it that much. And the Voice Memos app, that still bothers me. And Game Center, what are those bubbles? Are those people? Are those apps? I don't know. But the point is the icons do look very nice on Yosemite. 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 Yeah, that's right. Yosemite. Okay, guys, that's it. Thanks for watching. Be sure to watch my next video, which is all about iOS 8 because I have plenty to talk about, but I don't have to tell you that. So thank you guys again. Your support is incredible. And don't forget to like this video. If you like it, I do appreciate it. And I will see you in my next video, which is going up today. So be sure to watch it. Thanks and peace. All right, so let's talk about today's sponsor, and that is Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform that allows you to design beautiful websites. It's perfect for bloggers, creatives, small businesses, and more. Squarespace has full support for galleries, Dropbox file synchronization, custom CSS override for those looking for more control, and so much more. Sign up now using the link below for your 14-day free trial. No credit card is required. And of course, thank you so much for supporting my channel, and enjoy.